said. <laughs> Hey, this is Leon Poe, man. You listen to the Causeway Street Podcast. What's up, y'all? This is Kenny Anderson. Y'all listen to the Causeway Street Podcast. For all you new listeners out there, I'm your host, Joseph Pavone. I'm joined as usual by my two co-hosts. I'm Sean Dutra. What's up? Yeah, like talk about walks yourself. on the B. There you go. Joel Pavone. What up? I'm a Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> The most romantic. He leads off with that. The most romantic sign in all of the zodiac. Oh, you couldn't tell by my voice already. Oh, sexy. But I'm the producer of this ensemble that we call Causeway Street. In case you missed it. Hey, Bill Walton here, Celtics, 1986. You're listening to the Causeway Street podcast. Yeah, come here for nothing but the truth. This is where dreams come true. Thank you, Boston, for my life. Where are we going? You guys are such homers. It's your boy Terry Rozier. You're listening to the Causeway Street Podcast. Now listen to my boys Joe Sway, Joel, and Sean. There has the never mic. been an NBA player that has made the Hall of Fame with dreadlocks. Godway Street Podcast, Josue Pavone here, Joel Pavone to the right of me, Sean Dutra to the left of me. Fellas, Kyrie Irving declared out for the entire season. No regular season, no playoffs for Kyrie Irving. What does it mean for the Boston Celtics? We'll break that one down. And also, we're done. This is the last episode of the Cosmo Street Podcast. <laughs> Done. And also, over this with. is over with. the series finale. Oh, the, no, stop. Um, <laughs> with the news of Kyrie Irving, we've been canceled. <laughs> with, the, with the news of Kyrie Irving breaking, does this make you two want the Celtics to make a move for Kawhi Leonard nope. any more than you did a couple of days ago? I don't want anything. All I want to do is sit in my car and listen to REM. <laughs> oh, this guy's depressed. All right, all right, come on. We got, we got to talk people off the ledge here. Come on, Sean. We got to be more enthused Everybody here. Everybody Listen, listen. A week ago, I said this team could get out of the first round, and obviously, this doesn't change that. No, However, yeah, it no. does complicate it's things over. moving but, uh, forward. So, I'll, I'll tell you about uh, that. Things are, uh, things are looking uh, shaky for this for this Celtics team, obviously. And, and obviously, this has been a – we talk about injury-ridden season for the Boston Celtics. I mean, when's the last time we've seen something like this in the NBA? I mean, when is the, when's the last time we saw a team go through so – many setbacks throughout the regular season as the Boston Celtics went through this season. And for a team that's not only in the second place in the Eastern Conference, but they've went on a six-game winning streak without Kyrie Irving. They've performed well without him. They've performed well, of course, without Gordon Hayward all season long. Marcus, Mark. And Danny Ainge is one of the guys who's hours after the news broke said that, listen, this is what this team has faced. This is what we've seen. Adversity again and again and again. And I'm looking forward to the playoffs, and I can't wait to see how this team bounces back and how they perform without Kyrie Irving. Guys, what are your thoughts on what Danny H had to say? I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. I He's think a, like we're going to be lucky to win one to two games in the playoffs. He's a goddamn liar. That's what um, he is. I, I, Danny exactly. H. I'm, 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 I mean, I'm serious. Like, yeah, okay, great. But, great. Sean, you, were, you weren't saying that a week ago, though. You, you said, okay, you said that it's going to be hard for them to get out of the first round. But, come on, one to two games, you yep. think that's all they're going to win in the first round? No, I mean. This team is better than that. No, I may, maybe they are. Maybe they are. But, I mean, now that you know that reinforcements aren't coming, you don't, you're, not, you're not just playing one round and beating a team you're better than. This is the squad you're going to, to war with. This is it. Mine you know is Marcus mean? Smart. Was that you, Joel? Joel brought that up. Still, you still got one show, right, soldier coming back. Two children. That was me. Oh, uh, Sean. Oh, of course. That's your boy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, known. I just, I just don't see like you still, got, you still got one of you guys coming back. Huge your hit. best defender coming this back. This is an absolute huge hit. No the question. That, no, no doubt. The, the fact that Kyrie Irving is now done for the year, like the the whole reason why, like you can say that Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Terry Rozier, the emergence of all these players have Mook, um, for Marcus Morris for sure, definitely. But like these players have stepped up, but it it doesn't matter if you don't have Kyrie Irving. Like you don't have you don't have your the best player in the Eastern, arguably the best player in the Eastern Conference. All right, let me ask you this. Actually, no, I'll, I'll ask you all this. If the Celtics manage to make it to the second round and they and they're not facing uh, either the Toronto Raptors or the Cleveland Cavaliers, can they move forward? Yes, they can. Wait, no, time out. What about the first round? What about the first round? You, you, okay, I'm saying in a hypothetical situation because I, Joel, I'm, I'm sure still you're, think, you're, still, you're still in the same camp as me, I right? I still think they can make it past I mean, the first round. I mean, one week ago, we were talking about 
well, at least I was, the Washington I Wizards, was that's a tough matchup. But Joel is on the same boat as me in terms of if I they're still, not facing the Washington Wizards, they still can def- they still can defeat wait, the Milwaukee Bucks. I still think they can they still can defeat the, Mo- the, the, the Miami Heat. You I think still, they can defeat Washington? Yeah, yeah. It'll, be, like, it'll be tougher than the other teams. Right now? Yeah. As currently yeah. Con- really? It's the Sean, same. Why are you it's so the same. We had the same conversation. It's the same team. Wait, wait, You didn't see John Wall's hair? <laughs> Does that make a difference? John Wall's hair makes a big difference, man. Looking they just, like they just blew. They just, there. they just blew a twenty-six point lead last night against the uh, against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Well, well, I swear to God, the second I saw that hair, I was to, like, to this do game's just, over. To do just point, he did make some crucial mistakes down the stretch. Yeah, that, pass that, that ball were, right very to unlike uh, John Wall. Semi Erdan, whoever the hell that guy is. Semi Erdan, Semi Erdan, Osman, Osman, Osman. Either way, either way, either way. Here's the thing. I'm gonna say this right now. First and first and foremost, right off the jump. There has the never mic. been an NBA player that has made the Hall of Fame with dreadlocks. <laughs> so why the fuck is everyone trying to get those stupid little tiny little fucking the doodle braids. worm fucking dreadlocks going braids. on? I don't get that doodle braids. Yeah. The doodle, the doodle <laughs> braids, bro. The doodle braids. Why, what, what the fuck are they trying to prove? Literally. No one has ever made the Hall of Fame. Who's, who's the best dreadlocks look, 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 Before, John Wall before right this now, conversation continues to, to, to derail us from what no, we were no, initially I'm, talking I'm about, talk about John Wall. I'm going to turn to Joel. And I want to talk gonna, about dreadlocks. Okay, we'll, we'll get back to it. Okay, Joel, go ahead. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Go ahead. You got the floor. John Wall in the last two months has been called... Everything under the sun by his own teammates. Yeah, this is his little. Uzi All right, so then he, Wall. you know, this it's is new him. This is a great it's new him. This it's is like a great new, moment to take a, to take advantage of the lost identity of John Wall. He's gone from wearing, you know, those stupid yellow shades in you know indoors mm. when he was out to now to these to this braids and a headband who he hasn't new worn braids. in like yeah, I mean, five he, six years. He used to Dougie, you know. He's just he's forever transforming. That's who John Wall is, and he's John? making and he's making crucial mistakes when he shouldn't make mistakes. So I think the Celtics, as constructed, obviously, um, we hope that Terry Rozier gets healthier because he looked like shit against Toronto. Mm. But everybody else, Marcus Morris, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, shit, even Greg Monroe, I think the Celtics have more talent than the Washington Wizards. Um, as no, as don't. constructed, no, they don't. The, if 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 I just named you five, I just named you five players. Name me five players other than John Wall and Bradley Beal that are better than those players I just named. Go ahead. If you go against the Wizards, name 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 three more players on the Wizards that are better than the name the players I just named. Other than outside of John Wall and Bradley but Beal, I'm just saying John Wall and Bradley Beal the best two players in that series. Do you argue that? Okay. Do you argue that for the sake of argument? So. Two players are going to beat the Celtics. That's what you're telling me. I think if you have the two best players in a series, John Wall. I just we just talked about how bad John Wall looked against the Cavs. I know, but still, the, the, it, Paul, uh, the, I mean, I mean, the Celtics have to play them one more time before the se- the season ends, and we'll and and we'll probably see John Wall make some more mistakes because of his he doesn't know. My his identity guess, on this team and his role on his morning. will lose the doo doo braids by the by the playoffs, and he'll he'll be. Well, he loses the, the doo doo braids or not? No, that has a big thing to do with it. All right, yeah, let's we'll, let's 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 backtrack a bit here. Okay, Kyrie Irving, when you when you first heard the news, what were your initial thoughts? Are you guys shocked by this? And do you think yeah, that the I'm Celtics? But was, do you think the Celtics mishandled this injury? I was as the as the bigger question. I was pissed because Danny Ainge on the radio earlier that earlier that day was asked about Kyrie Irving if he's going to be out at all, and he just said. Just the first round. When he knew hours later they're going to release this information that Mm -hmm. hmm, he had an infection that was caught during the, what was they calling it? The minimally minimally invasive invasive procedure. Well, that's what I'm saying. So why did they say it there, though? But that's what I'm saying, though. Well, that's that's neither here nor there. I mean, yeah, you know how Danny Ainge is. This isn't the first time he says one thing and then says another. You know what I mean? And something else happens. The other shoe drops. No, but that's the Danny we've known the last. No, but that but that that matters. That matters because this this is going to affect him going forward. A kneecap injury is just it's just not just not gonna go away. Well, I think what well, well my what I'm trying to get at is were the Celtics did the Celtics make the wrong decision and in performing that minimally invasive procedure? Or do you think the Celtics could have just had the surgery before all this happened? I think this is all blamed on Isaiah Thomas. I mean, they probably their doctors are probably second guessing themselves, they're being more cautious than they normally would be because what happened with Isaiah, right? If Eddie Lasur got fucking fired. Eli Lasur was the trainer on this team for Since years and years and years. Yeah. Isaiah yeah. Thomas comes in, has the hip injury, right? They 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 were very 
open up. They they just said, you know what, Isaiah, you're gonna be fine. You're they were be vague. Fine. Fine. They were you're vague about this. They were vague because even Maddie, now, Danny had no answers. But now Kyrie comes in and he says, you know, have a little knee tendonitis, and they have super it was soreness conservative, at first. conservative doctors. They're coming in trying to be the exact opposite of what they've been. I think this is a direct correlation with what Isaiah went through last year. I swear to God, I I I, I don't know how you can argue that. But I also think that the reason why they delayed sort of the news to everybody and they sort of kept everyone hoping and holding for hope. We talked about this earlier, Joel. I think it was more of a, a a rally, a rallying cry for the actual the Celtics who will be playing. I mean, if you know when Kyrie goes down that he's done. <clears throat> Even if the Celtics knew that day. Which could go back to what I'm let him play a little bit. What I'm saying, but what goes back to kind of how I feel about this team in the playoffs. You know, obviously, now. obviously, if, obviously, if matchups, uh, matchups are going to be the difference of them going far or not, because we know Kyrie's out. We know Smart's going to be out at least until like the middle of the second round. What, what the team, what, what, what really do they have to lose? Because right, right now, I feel like the morale of like, of like, quote unquote, Celtics Nation is just like, well, okay, wait till next year. So anything the Celtics no, really do, I hate that shit. Wait I do too. I'm year. not saying the East is wide open this year. That's what I'm saying. This was the year for us to get to the okay. final. Okay, so then why can't why can't the Celtics get there? Well, because Kyrie Irving's injured, Gordon Hayward's injured. So, I mean, but you just said the East is wide open though. Like the like East like, is like wide Cleveland, open if Cleveland, you got a superstar. I get you, but Cleveland outside of LeBron, really, who 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 are they going to rely on? Kevin Love is not one hundred percent. I don't care what anybody says. I know, but it's still LeBron. Right? But it, but Jordan Clarkson, like we've talked about this. Well, I think this is when we we reignite the conversation we had a week ago. We were talking about Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum. Yes, there isn't a superstar on this team, but can those two guys combine themselves, combine their production to to create all star production, yeah, superstar if, production? If, if Jason Tatum. Can like literally, probably overnight, like blossom into a superstar, like and where he actually like all the things that we think he could do eventually happens in the playoffs. Then yeah, definitely. Because of the mentality I think before you know Thursday was for 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 this Let's for this team after Kyrie. exactly yeah. after especially after Toronto like they only scored seventy eight points like when you just talked about Jalen Brown and uh, Jason Tatum right they combined for seventeen points they. That's not what they've been doing no, the Tatum previous seven points. games. Mm. No, I'm saying, but Jason Tatum and... I know. That, Jason okay, Tatum I got you. I got points. you, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. like the, bench, the yeah. bench outperformed the starters. Terry Rozier, again, looked like shit. So Terry Rozier needs to get healthy, rest a little bit. They, they, they're they going to secure the second seed. Which they're not going to catch Toronto. Which is one of the things that I've been... Uh, that I just think like people don't understand. Like Terry Rozier can have a good four games... But then, like, you're not going to get con- consistent performance he's, out of him. He's had a good 25 games well, before I, he went I down. Know, I know. I I get it. But, yeah, like, yeah, the streak you just going need for, to, uh, you just need to uh, understand 25 that. Games, 25 games. Over 20, 25 games of scoring over 10 points. Yeah. Terry's not Kyrie, though. I understand that. Right. But the thing the thing is, though, you, you're you not looking for – we talked kind of – we kind of touched upon this last week. You're not looking to get – 25 points out of Terry or 25 you points. You need it out, now. Listen, listen, though. Listen. You're not looking for 25 points out of Terry, 25 points out of Tatum. One night it might be Terry. The another night might be Jason. Another night might be might be Morris. Sure. Don't you think other teams that's harder for them to prepare for? No, I don't because I think there's a better chance of those. Uh, there's a better chance of you game planning against those players to slow them out of their their role, right? If if you have if you have a guy that you know you can't stop, i.e. Kyrie Irving, i.e. LeBron James, but we just had a conversation James last week. Harden, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, those type of players where like. You can do everything you can, but you're not going to slow them down. But we just had a those are the players that win in the NBA. Yeah, but the, we just had a conversation last week. We couldn't decide on who who who's been the most important player on the Celtics. So don't you think other teams are feeling that way too? Sure, but I mean, it's all well and good. Like you know who the best player is on the Celtics right now, right no, now. No, with- okay, the best player on the Celtics is out. So that's how what I'm how, how do you prepare but for we're that? We're talking about most most valuable. That's fun when you know who the best player is. We're not saying the best. We're saying important. There's a difference. Well, I think the most important uh, person for this team, or the most imp- important asset of this team going in the forward? first round series, is going to be Brad Stevens in the first round series. If they're, if they're playing against Miami Heat or or, or uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, I think that's when Brad Stevens has the edge over those two guys. Yeah. And not, that's not to discredit yeah. Spolstra. Spolstra is a great coach. However, I just think if you compare the rosters, I just think the edge is to the Celtics. The only time I get a little iffy is if we're talking about the Washington Wizards because when you have all-star, superstar talent that can go off and, and carry their team night after night, 
that's when it gets tougher. And, of course, that's the same case if they're up against the Cleveland Cavaliers in the second round. But I do think this team can get out of the first round. After the first round, it gets dicey. I don't think first round's a possibility really anymore. But if, no, Brad, no, Stevens, if, Brad, Stevens, if you believe Brad Stevens coach of the year. I why, you, why you're switching now because Kyrie, we weren't expecting to see Kyrie in the first no, round. he wasn't but switching. But he always said that they weren't going to get out of the no, first I round. No, I said it would have been a little bit you of an issue. You said it would be an issue, but now but, you're saying it's like no chance. Don't, don't, no, because there's no reinforcements coming. Like, have you, you guys watch Game of Thrones? No. Absolutely not. Next analogy. We've talked about this. All right. Game of Thrones. No, the audience will know. In Game of Thrones. Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him in the, the comments, uh, guys. Battle of the Bastards. All right. The Jon Snow and his crew are getting fucked in. Like, they're dead. They're dying. They are surrounded. They're dead. All of a sudden, they wouldn't have. They, they, they fought just long enough. To the point of like dying, the like they knew coming. they were dying. They knew this 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 whole group was pushing them in together, and they kept but they kept fought long enough without giving up until the reinforcements came. You know what the reinforcements were the Knights of the Veil. All right, oh, Knights of the Veil came in like a fucking waterfall and knocked everyone out, and then it, 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 they they won the battle because you know what? That was they just Drew. had to hold. For a little bit before they knew Kyrie Irving was going to come back. Because, but they they know all along he's coming. Yeah, they but know you're all selling, along they were coming. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. but you're you're selling Brad Stevens short. You're saying he's coach of the year. Let Listen, him be coach of the year. I would much rather have a team right now. Let him coach. Don't you think he has? I, I don't. Okay. And I don't care what anybody all says. Right. People like saying that he has Maybe nothing to prove. They'll go to seven in the first round. If they go to seven in the first round, I'll be happy. If they make the first round series a uh, uh, entertaining series, you know one team that's not. I'll be happy. You know one team that's not surprised about all this. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers. To me, the Cleveland Cavaliers knew going into this season, even before the trade deadline. I mean, even before Kyrie Irving requested a trade, they knew that a Kyrie was going to miss a chunk of the regular season, and b they knew that the following off season, they knew that. He was going to need surgery. They knew that, no, and, they, and that's the biggest I, reason I why they. I that's one. That's one of the reasons why they made the trade. Because think about it: if you go into the off season and the, and this guy needs surgery, he be all of a sudden his his stock drops dramatically, and you're unable to pull a first round pick, a Isaiah Thomas, you know, bonus players like Jay Crowder and and Ante Zizic. I think they knew that that's the best offer they were going to get then and later if they were to wait and hold on to Kyrie Irving. You really think they thought that far? Absolutely, one thousand percent. I just think I think they traded that they knee. Saw Brooklyn pick and they said, yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that is the first. No, no, that, that, that was that, the first great deal that, that they had. knee has been nagging Irving, and they've just been pushing him along because they want to keep him and LeBron competing against the Warriors. But no, 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 no. That's uh, rewind sway, rewind sway. Because that's exactly what no, happened. We're Sean. saying we're saying that right now. We're saying that right now, knowing what we know. But I was, rewind it, rewind it. We were saying that before. When you. Every, in you, I said, both I thought said. Isaiah were going to be healthier to start the season. Okay, and so did that's Cleveland. When a, that's when a trade happened. So did Cleveland, and the Celtics had no clue about the knee, and and they knew about the knee. They may have known about the knee. They one thousand percent knew was, about it. He threatened to sit out and get surgery if he didn't trade. No, no, that's what I'm. No, before that though, but literally, all we heard was Kyrie was unhappy. That's literally it. So Kyrie, but that's the first thing. I, that's the first thing I said when the trade happened. I was like. This dude is gonna. This dude's gonna have issues with that knee. I'm not saying that like I knew he 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 was gonna need surgery like he does now, but I was thinking at some point he's gonna need that surgery, right. and he only had two years left on his deal, and you know you, what have, I mean? you have to get it before so, before so, you're free agent. Exactly. And so it, it was no, I think it was December, like late December, when, when the knew. when the story dropped that he threatened to sit out if they yeah. didn't trade him. Yeah. That's when you know, okay, this guy clearly has a knee issue because you can't just like fake a surgery. Right, yeah. You right. can't so say like, he, hey, if he went, if he went, there's no leverage said, hey, there. I, the organization doesn't know. believe no, that, but you. You either trade me because I don't want to play. I, I mean, my guess is he probably said. He knew he had to go in there and get a cleanup. I need to get a cleanup, and this could either sit me out for the entire year, or you could trade me, right? So they knew something was going to happen. And my guess is Danny Ainge probably knew something was going to happen. I mean. Well, he wanted out because, let's, like Sway let's said, they probably weren't going to be able to trade Wait, him. But but seriously, right. let's be honest. If Gordon Hayward didn't break his foot on the first game five minutes of the season, maybe Kyrie has his surgery in November. Maybe he has it in December. And he's back by now, ready for the playoffs with a healthy Gordon Hayward. But they, they had, didn't have that luxury. You know what I mean? They did not have that luxury now that the, the plan was well, Gordon Hayward – uh, Marcus Smart and the young guys, and then all of a sudden, Hayward's not there. So you're like, you know what, Kyrie? Yeah, you he feel was, like you can play through the season. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll he, give it a shot. And, yeah, and because they would, point. they would just rest him every, you know, every few weeks. He rests, you know, against like Orlando and against like the shitty teams. He would rest. But I think, but I, it, it just, it just fine. like 
the it, soreness just wouldn't go away. Yeah, it would have been it would have been fine if Hayward was there. But you don't, you don't think that the Celtics may have made a mistake in, in, in having him do the the, the, the minimal procedure? Minimal, no, I, minimally I invasive, think, excuse me, procedure. I think that if if the doctors from last year were on the team this year, he wouldn't have had the surgery. They would have just pushed him along? Yep. Yep. I, I, I 1,000 would think this is an Isaiah Thomas problem. All right, so let's talk about that. All right, on March 24th, they removed the tension rod, mm-hmm. right? And the wire, wire. The, sorry, the tension right. wire, my bad. They removed the tension wire, and they found out there that shit— this dude has an infection because of the bacterial screws. Bacterial infection, right. Yeah, bacterial infection because of the screws. So now he has to get the screws taken out. So now he out. has to get the screws taken right. out. But as soon as the surgery happened, as soon as the uh, procedure happened, they're like, the wire's out. Oh, and guess what? The kneecap is A-OK, right? That's great news. He'll be back three to six weeks. But they already know he's not coming back in three to six weeks because he's got this infection. And they they already have this. They already have the they, 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 they already have the, the surgery scheduled to take the screws out. Yeah, but you know what that means, thing. Joel. That means let's see how he responds. And obviously, he did, the knee didn't respond well. That's when you have an infection, sway, it's not gonna it's not gonna just go away. They have to go in there and take those out because that's what's causing the infection. That's my point. Right, but what, what's why did the infection happen? Because they took the wire out. No, or they, the saw it, they, they saw, saw it when they took they the wire saw it when they took the wire out. I mean, then you, I'm back to the same question. Maybe the Celtics sh- should have done this sooner when he was feeling discomfort before, or maybe they should have just let it ride. But, you know, well, the, I think, I think he, the, he, the, he, the chances of the Celtics letting this ride in a season where they don't have Gordon Hayward, in a season where they're sort of thinking to themselves, can we really win the NBA championship here, or are we better off protecting our star and moving forward next year and having that window of opportunity for him to be 1,000%? Well, that's a little bit of both because I bet you Kyrie was just like, nah, man, it's just a little soreness. I just ice it. You know, it's a little swollen, no big deal. But it just wasn't going away. So he played through it, same thing with Isaiah, as far as he could go with it. And then he's like, you know, the second opinion, probably had more than second, more than two or three opinions, but they're only reporting only a second opinion. They're like, no, we got to go in there and see what's going on. Maybe if we remove this, oh, oh, wait, oh, shit, bro, you got an infection in there. So we got to, you know, schedule another, and this time it's not even a procedure. This time it's surgery. You're out four to five months. Hmm. Just in time for the start of next year's training camp. So that's 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 where the Celtics are at. But I mean, if the Celtics didn't have this the type of team that that, that we've seen over the last you know well, minus the Toronto game, the last seven <laughs> games, then I I you know I I think you could you can call it the season a wash. I don't like using that term, but you can just say like all right, whatever. I'll just wait till next year. Whatever happens, happens. No, because I I think they can at least push it to the second round. Maybe you know. Even a game seven in the second round, even if they lose in game seven of that second round, it's like, you know, that's. You get those youngins. You get those you youngins get, some experience. Give them the reps, right? Exactly. All right, well, Kyrie Irving took to Instagram uh, a, a oh, yeah, long, about that. somewhat <laughs> heartfelt drunkenly message. drunkenly took to Instagram. Um, right. It's like a knee jerk reaction, no pun intended. Yeah. There's a few <laughs> grammatical errors in here. Uh, yeah, you can say that. He was uh, upset, man. He was upset. A couple He's, swears. He says, uh, I'm going to read this. I'm going to try to read this as quickly as possible. No, it's not true. <laughs> go, ahead, says, go ahead, John. What, was the, what are these end bombs? <laughs> he said, the hardest thing to do some. Sometimes is accept the N-bomb. uncontrollable things life throws at you. And bomb. You try consistently to learn, grow, and prepare every day to equip your mind, body, and spirit with tools to deal with some of those things. With the motherfucking but things. I feel when those moments arise, they all give you a sense of unfulfillment. That's such a Kyrie thing to say. Um, and I mean that in a good way. Simply it, because it, it, puts, filled, motherfucker. it puts some of your personal journey and goals on a brief hold. It's simply a test of your perseverance and will to be present even in the wake of what's going on in this case finding out i have an infection in my knee is definitely a moment that i now accept and move past without holding on to the what ifs proving the naysayers completely effing wrong there's a swear there sean fucking wrong (laughs) and accomplishing the goals i've set out for the team and myself this season was only a snapshot of what's to come from me trust me the journey back to the top of mount everest continues hashtag standing rock Sue Tribe, if uh, I remember my social I study correctly. Let's go, Celtics. Celtics fan, I look forward to hearing how loud it gets in TD Garden during the playoffs and experiencing how intense the environment gets. Thank you all. Um, man. Hashtag there. No, Earth is flat. I, I, I've been saying this for weeks now. I always thought that the best of what we've seen from Kyrie Irving as a Celtic was going to be in the playoffs. I guess we have to wait a year. No, I think the biggest thing I take away from that is like uh, – why the fuck did he say Mount Everest? 
There's he, no mountain in Boston, man. He's gonna climb Mount Everest. So well, because he, the he tallest probably, mountain in the fucking world. He feels like this That's is his the biggest synonym. You're gonna fucking choose. This is his biggest challenge right now. As a How Celtic. bad is the knee injury then? How bad is the knee injury? Is it know. Mount Everest bad or is it Mount Kilimanjaro bad? <laughs> I mean, there are eight tall mountains in the world, and you chose the tallest. <laughs> like I'm, 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 I'm hey. is it Mount McKinney? Hey, he's looking for you greatness. Mount he's looking for greatness. Nah, he already about, has a we're ring. About to, we're about to see the greatness of Mount Brad Washington. Right he now. already has a ring, and now he's gonna get. He's gonna chase another one with the team on his back. By the way, he already knows on how his loud terms. Boston gets. Man, he he's been in the Garden for the playoffs in the first round. He's been there. He he knows how fucking loud it gets. It gets fucking loud, Kyrie. It gets the same loud as when you're the number one seed against us as when you're the number two seed with us. Well, guess who chimed in on his comment section in, on, uh, on Instagram? About to get a motherfucking scholarship, Jay Crowder. Isaiah Thomas. Oh, goes, here he is. Minor setback fam. Hashtag guess, Sean. The earth is flat. Guess the hashtag. hashtag slow grind. Grinding. Slow grind. That's slow grind. Well, that's stupid. By the way. Dude, that's been like his. Mount Everest. That's been like his mantra all season. Yeah. That man. freaks me out. Mount Everest. Been saying that since August. Slow grind. Still slow, but I want a max contract. Wait, what? Hold on. Is anyone worried? So, uh, is anyone worried that Kyrie's contract year is next year? If he doesn't have playoff success this year, are you worried he's just going to be like, I'm going to get a contract from anybody? No, I don't think so. I, you, I think think, he likes, you think he's tied into Boston yet? I think he's absolutely 1,000% tied into Boston. That was, I, I think he loves the atmosphere. I think he appreciates, obviously, what the organization has done for him. He's not going to play this year. And he loves the, the team as a whole. Like He's been a leader th- throughout the locker room. He loves that. He loves working with guys like Rozier. I he feel loves like this is a, this Jalen is, Brown and Jason setback. Tatum. After his, uh, his first take appearance right after he got traded, I was like, if the Celtics don't put a good team around this dude, I felt like, he's yo, out. He's out. All right, but, well, but but I don't know. Seeing now, you know how he first time I've seen him put a an Instagram post in the middle of the season talking about you know Celtics fans, Everest. yeah, and Everest, yeah. I feel like we'll see a better Kyrie, obviously, if he's healthy. But next he's seen season. how loud loud the garden gets. No, I, I know will. that, but I'm just saying. My <laughs> point is, you he's never on that part. The, he's never the entire yeah. like essay I just read. He's fixated <laughs> on that last. He's never couple said, sentence. He's never talked about he, the bottom. Don't, he's don't never fucking talk, pander me, man. No, but no, but he's you know never. I mean? he's, don't fucking like act like. Oh, I uh, can't wait to tell a You fucking know a lot of guys, dude. Talk but about listen, pinpointing listen, what listen. he said. Yeah, I know. Jeez, don't he's never talked. Kyrie. Don't be pissed at him. Be, I'm pissed at him. Be pissed at the fucking medical staff no, in I'm Cleveland and the medical staff here in Boston. Dude, don't on. be Having pissed some... at anybody. This is basketball. <laughs> People get hurt, man. It happens. No, no, no but I, he's never. This, is, this this smells funky to me. It smells like fish on yeah. Tuesday. All right. I don't like the post. Okay, great. But he's never put a post about the Celtics fans. That's my point. He's never done that all season. He he gets asked sometimes at the end of, at the end of games. Oh, how was the crowd? What do you think? It's like a playoff atmosphere. He never really details. He that. dodges it, right? Yeah, he, he's like, yeah. He's just like, he was like, yeah, it was, it was hype, you know, that type of answer, like, you know, his one-worded answers for the most part. But other other players like Rozier, like like Tatum, like Brown, like Morris, Morris, is like, yo, this is Boston, like this is this is what it is, like it's always been like that, it's always hype in here. That's why I just feel like this is a different type of different type of atmosphere on this squad than we've seen, even with the last two playoff teams with Brad Stevens. All right, well, Joel, you talked about um, putting a team around him, a, a superstar team around him that's going to keep him in Boston because obviously regardless of the injury, he is facing a contract season up for next year. Uh, of course, he'll be a free agent in 2019, summer of 2019. So with that being said, um, Jalen Rose took to ESPN talking about Kawhi Leonard, the situation in San Antonio. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, of course, you know he's been trying to get a second opinion whether he's going to play or not. But Jalen Rose believes that he's already played his last game in San Antonio. He's been cleared since and December, he, by the way says Great. that the number one team that should be calling San Antonio right now is the Boston Celtics, that they have not only the assets to pull the deal off, but pulling in a guy like Kawhi Leonard would put them right there in the NBA Finals going up against whoever comes out of the Western Conference. Guys, what are your thoughts about that? Should the Celtics actually try to pursue Kawhi Leonard? And if so, what if you're Danny Ainge, of course, what are you willing to part with to make that deal happen? I, I like how Jalen Rose just finally, like, after, I don't know. He's eight, been saying it for eight, a little while. Eight, eight years of the Celtics having the most assets and leave, think they're the best player, best team for Kawhi to go to or Blake to go to. He, it, what an idiot, dude. Fuck. Jalen Rose is, is a moron. 
I don't know. I'm torn on that. I feel the same way. I, I, I think I, mean, I think if you're the Celtics, you just you stay you stay pat. I mean, we've had this conversation before when we had the whole Anthony Davis conversation back in what the December. It's Anthony Davis and it's Col- it's uh no, it's Anthony Davis you, and it's Giannis Antetokounmpo. Those are the only two well, guys let me ask that you. I see is uh, worth sacrificing someone like Jason Tatum something. and Jalen Brown. Let me ask them That's it. Those two guys, he, they're not available right now. Kawhi and Anthony Davis would be an equal get for the Celtics. Would it? Yeah, I, I don't think so. so. I don't know about that. I think you need to get. I think, I think so. you need to give up more well, I think so. for the Kawhi be, Leonard, the best big man in the NBA. I don't know about I that. I think Kawhi's more. I think you, Kawhi, dude, Kawhi. Say the Celtics get Kawhi, and they get rid of Tatum, Brown, who else? Just to make contracts match, you'd have to throw in Morris. You have to throw in um, Baines. Well, Baines is a free agent. Oh, one year. Yeah, he's only one uh, year. Rozier. No. Oh. Yeah, he's throwing. No, to get Yo, he makes Kawhi, he makes eighteen Kawhi, million. He actually Kawhi, makes the exact amount as you're Kyrie. probably tossing in Al. I mean, if you could no, get if no, you you're get, not tossing it out because Al no. is way over. Yeah, no, if you if you get Kawhi, why would San Antonio want to take on more money than mm-hmm. they already have a Kawhi? They want Kawhi. young. They want they want young talent. You trade and Al maybe draft picks, for but forget draft picks. Just just on talent alone, it's probably going to take Jalen Brown and Tatum. Right, so, so you're sacri- you're kind of my, my plan for this. I'll tell, bring it up later. But you're 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 mortgaging or you're sacrificing the future for right now. Mm. So now you're talking Kyrie Irving, Kawhi Leonard, and Gordon Hayward. All three of them coming off of season-ending injuries, right? Mm. Yeah. So how 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 big is that window? How many years now? Right. 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 Like Fourteen days. <laughs> I, I just <laughs> you the got thing, the, the thing I like. And we've been saying this all season long, and I'll say it again: like the the balance of this team of older, fourteen days of experienced, season all star talent, along with up and coming, rising potential all star talent, is perfect right now. Why mess with it? Unless you're getting top tier talent, and I'm not saying because Kawhi Leonard isn't top tier talent, but I just feel like what you're getting out of Kawhi Leonard, you could already have a Kawhi Leonard already, and you could heck, I mean, Jalen Brown Jaylen, could be a Kawhi Leonard, Jason Tatum. Could be a Kawhi Leonard. Jason Tatum is destined to at least average twenty three points here. because Jalen Rose a, a says, season here because Jalen Rose says the Celtics are still one superstar away from. Oh, thanks, Jalen. Winning a championship. Yeah. Hey, oh, hey, Jaylen, not even winning it. Competing. Yeah, he's hey, right. He's right. Jaylen, the, the, the superstar's Jaylen, uh, name is Gordon Hayward. That, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what's yeah. missing here. And even Paul Pierce, who was right next to him when he said it, was like, hmm, I don't know about he that. Gave him the, he <laughs> gave him the Jersey Shore <laughs> noise. No, nah, he gave him the. Mm. Mm. He was. Like, mm. And even and even Jayla was like, "No, I thought you would love this." He's like, mm. and then you know what his response? The Pierce grin too. He's like, you know mm. what? Know what his response was? He says that Kawhi would be better suited on the Lakers. Mm. So I was like, "What the hell, Paul?" Yeah, Paul. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm not Paul? agreeing about the Celtics thing, but really, the Lakers. But anyways, all right. He's been on the roll lately. I'm Shout gonna say got. this. I'm, I'm, I'll say it. I mean, I love Kawhi Leonard. I yeah. love Kawhi Leonard. You said that he, he's your favorite basketball player right he, now. He's probably he probably is. I and I. I Last year, I wanted to put him number one, okay. but I couldn't because Russ. And Ooh, I, he may it? have been number two or three. I don't know, remember. But this year, I wanted him in my top ten. You said I couldn't pick him because he didn't play. Because he's only played nine games. Right. <laughs> he, he was still in my top ten. I love Kawhi. I think Kawhi's a game-changing player. But you can't give up Brown and Tatum for him. But that's what they would want. You can't. And it's salary. Here's what I'm doing if I'm the Celtics. What's the biggest asset the Celtics have? Right now? You just named him. Those two young guys. Well, right. probably probably draft picks. What dra- what? Which what's, ones? What's next? What's next after J- Jason Tatum? What what do people if if you could pick anything off the Celtics roster, who would you pick? Tatum probably. No. Got a higher ceiling. No. Tatum. Any any player including Hayward or, or any, Irving? Any anybody. Irving? Anybody. Tatum, who's the MVP, Sway? Brown, who's the MVP of the Celtics? Irving. No, who's your MVP? So you said it oh. a bunch of times. Oh, you just <laughs> nah, I know where he's going with this. Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens. <laughs> you gonna trade Brad Stevens? For Kawhi Leonard? All right. Straight up. No. Nope. If you are the Spurs, the Spurs have lost Tim Duncan. I don't know if you can even do that. Can you even trade coaches? They've no. they're gonna lose Tony That's Parker. What they did with Doc. They're gonna lose Manny <laughs> Ginobili. Let him, they let that him out squad of is dead. Lamarcus Aldred has one more year left and he's gone. Kawhi Leonard could stay there and play with the likes of Patty Mills. And he can also make DeJounte Murray. 50 million by year four. Sure, sure. He sure could. Maybe. But if you're the Spurs management, right, you're going to see Kawhi Leonard and G-leaguers 
right? Let's be honest. Who's the second best player on the Spurs minus Marcus Aldridge? Manu. All right. <laughs> Still balling. It's, it's 2018. All right. <laughs> Still doing his thing. Next, Watch him in the playoffs. Uh, for what, Rudy Gay? Mr. Uh, Parker. Okay. All right. So, uh, Joel's living in uh, 2006 right now. They just won the title three years ago, so it's not, like it's not that far away. <laughs> All right, fine. But who was the best player on that title team? It was Kawhi. It was Kawhi, right? Yeah. So Kawhi's there with just Duncan's gone. Ginobili's gone. The whole reason why he was good is gone. The Spurs are like, even if we sign Kawhi to a super max deal, are they winning championships anytime soon? With that squad? With that squad. In the conversation. They're always in the conversation. Mm. The answer is no. If you sign Kawhi to a supermax deal, you're gonna have you're not gonna be able to go out and just get whatever you want. However, if you trade Kawhi, you know who's leaving is Pop. Pop is gonna look at the team if you trade Kawhi and say, "I'm not rebuilding. I'm been in the league for 20 years." So if they trade Kawhi and they lose Pop, you might as well trade Kawhi and Pop and get a return like Tatum and Brad Stevens. Something to build around. You have yeah. the best rebuilding coach in the league who took the Celtics from Jared Sollinger. Okay, so convince me why the Celtics would do this. Yeah. Why the Celtics would <laughs> yeah. do this? Yeah. Why yeah, the to Celtics? lose their best nope. coach. The, the, nope. One of, the, because one of the get, best coaches in the NBA right now. Well, you, get pop, they... you get Pop, who can easily work a team of veterans that knows how to win into a championship team. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You just said he's been in San Antonio for over 20 years. Why wouldn't he want to live? Where it snows. If you give him just like that, Kawhi Leonard, Gordon Hayward, Al Horford, and um, Kyrie Irving, you give Pop that team. You know what? If if Pop wait, is still wait, around is next Stevens, year, if Brad Pop Stevens is still is around next year with the, the Spurs, I'm gonna ask him. Is, hey, would you like to coach Boston Celtics? Is, the, is Brad and, Stevens and the best I'm gonna coach make in the league? ESPN is he because he's gonna rip me a new one. What's that? Is he the best coach in the league? Make sure yes. you say. It. Make Brad sure Stevens is the best coach after, in the league. After Pop. After Pop. So you're getting the number one coach in the league. You're trading the best rebuilding coach for the best championship coach. And now you're trading Kawhi Leonard, the best player in the deal, Sean, in this rookie class. Okay, would you trade Kyrie Irving and a couple of guys for LeBron James? LeBron James is the best player in the league, right? But you don't, for this team, for a team that's up and coming? I mean, I don't know. Pop, as, as, it all, it all Pop depends, and Kawhi. It all depends on the, the situation on, on building what you're building around. Tell me who says no. Tell me who says no. If the champ, if the Celtics won a championship next year, aren't they in a better position with Pop and Kawhi, and Kyrie and Gordon and Al and Jalen Brown, or do they just want to keep Tatum and Brad Stevens without <laughs> Kawhi? Is, why does he, why do they have to trade the coach? Why do they got to trade Brad? I mean, boy, you want Pop. Brad can coach these guys. Because if you, I'm if taking you, Brad. Man. If you trade, no, he, if thinks, you trade he, thinks, he thinks if you if you trade Brad Stevens, that you don't have to trade Brown. Brown. Oh, so you just throw Brad's salary into the into the cap? I don't know how that works. We did no, it for Doc. We did it for Doc. No, they let him out of his contract. We did it's it, different. Uh, Kawhi doesn't make too much money. No, Ta- he Jason makes eighteen Tatum. mil. Cool. Okay, then yeah, fine. Eighteen fine. mil. You know so what? you got you got to you got to put up eighteen or close to it. He actually you can get a thirteen. He actually puts up. I mean, he actually puts up. He actually, Steven ma- he actually makes, makes like, the, ex- yeah, but it's different. He makes the exact same amount as, as Kyrie Irving does. Well, that's the thing because if he if he was making twenty three, twenty four, you could say, oh yeah, just throw Allen. All in there. right, now but because uh, of that, other than, other than this, stuff. I don't want this, but this may be something that comes up. What if the Celtics just said straight up Kyrie for Kawhi? Would you do it? No. no. Why? Are you serious? No. Yeah. Co- no. No. One thousand percent. I'm doing that. Hundred. Well, we just a thousand percent of the time. We just we just talked we just talked about the you Celtics. You got Rozier I mean, I'm, taking I, over the point, starting yeah, point guard it's, it's not like I I believe that they're one you know all star away from competing for a championship because if they were, everyone was healthy, they'd be competing for a championship now. But my, well, I would play the four. <laughs> I still wouldn't do it. No. You'd have Tatum and Kawhi switching between the three and the Where, four. It's the same. It's the same. So it's wait, the same thing still, for Ky, it's the same thing for Kyrie Irving, right? He's got one more year left after this. We don't know. We don't. No one knows how healthy he is. But I'm. But wouldn't you? So Sean what, wants. What, okay, I, now I'm starting to wrap my head around this. So Sean, you want Kawhi, but you want him on some like weird circumstances. Like, yeah, you, yeah. You want. You want to want trade. Doesn't want to trade none of the young yeah. guys. No, I I want Kawhi, but I I would love Kawhi way more than Anthony Davis. I don't think I'm trading Tatum and Stevens for whatever they have there. Um, right. Yes, for young conventional. 
No, I just, I just, I just think that there's a chance that Kawhi fits on this team. Kawhi would, un- and Davis wouldn't. Not as, not as good as Kawhi. I just think you have two guys who can blossom into a player that's very similar to Kawhi. I so think why, you just have to maybe why, why give up the why give that up for someone who, you know, is always going to make an, an immediate impact. But don't you shorten that window a bit, just a little bit? If no. you if you give away your your your, your best, no, nah, because if your you, best two youngsters. Let's let's hypothetically say you have one's twenty, one's twenty one. Celtics pop caution to Celtics, and you have Kyrie, Gordon Haywood, Kawhi Leonard, and Al Horford. And Jalen Brown. That's your starting lineup. No one. That beats the Warriors in six. That team beats the Warriors in six. I agree. But I I think this team beats the Warriors in six as well when completely healthy. I do. You know? I do. All right. Let's move along here. Sean Dutra's. When you look ahead. Sean, your last one of the season. Yeah, this 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 is it. This is how this is going to go. This is it. What do you got? The Celtics um, have lost Kyrie Irving for the year. You're doing this off the top? So it don't fucking matter who they're playing. <laughs> off the top of the dome. Um, of course it matters, games, Sean. It matters. All of these games, the rest of the games on the schedule, how many games are they playing? Well, I mean, theoretically speaking, they are locked in the second seed. Yeah. So, I mean, but it matters for everybody else, though, because one of those games is against the Washington Wizards now. Sure. You could either... Bump them out of seventh or bump them. If I play the Wizards, well, I'm whenever playing, you guys hear this Nader, podcast, because Nader's man, playing, it, it changes Nader's every day. Forty minutes. Um, Kadeem Allen, Nader, Jabari Bird getting a lot of minutes. Yeah, but Selly's probably starting against the Wizards. I'm just saying it. It doesn't matter. You're in the second seed, and you know what? If you don't have if you don't have Kyrie Irving, you are resting your players. So they play Chicago next. Well, you can't just like completely rest those dudes because. Nader hasn't started a game yet. No, I know. No, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about the the Jason Tatum's and the. No, I think Jaylen Tatum Browns. Tatum could use a rest. No, nah, you got to keep them fresh. Yeah, you got to keep them fresh. They're young. Maybe maybe they're young Zier who you know had to sit game, out because of his two ankle. Games? Maybe the last one. No. Maybe the last game you you, you sit him a bit. All right, all, reduce I'm their is, minutes, all I'm saying is if we're looking ahead, Red Sox Yankees next week. That's going to be a nice series. <laughs> all right. And that's it for the season finale of Sean Dutra's. When you look ahead. <laughs> All right. Huge win, though, for the Sox on Thursday. And they, they're off to a great start, guys. Yo, Hanley's been killing. Alex Cora, oh, baby. Hanley, Hanley. Yo, by Hanley, the way, keep his it up. dreads, though. Keep it up. You can play dreads in baseball. I never said you can't have dreads in baseball. Oh, man. You better be slugging it. That's exactly what, you, that's exactly it, what he's doing. It, you man. know what? Paula goes. Just that fucking Paula last goes, name, guys. Paula Ramirez. He, he goes, uh, ever since he started growing his dreads, since he's been in Boston, he goes, she hates the dreads. And this year, now that they've gotten down to the butt, she's like, he looks he looks rich. <laughs> he looks like he's having a good time. Is it that low? Yeah, they're down. It's like Damian now. Marley low? Well, it's yeah, not Damian Marley They're down low, there. He's like, she's like, you know, dreadlocks in, in, in the Dominican, either you're, you're a hood rat or you got money. I was like, okay, because <laughs> right. I've never heard the you got money part for the past four years. He's been on the team. It's like two two opposite said, ends of the spectrum. You said, why is he looking like a hood rat the entire time? Well, look at you remember Manny, right? When Manny Manny had the dreads. When, what? But like before and after games, when he had the suit and everything, he looked really polished with his dreads. That's right? it, though. That that's what she was saying. It's like <laughs> it's like it's it's it. I don't know. Down there, it's like you can either have dreads because you want dreads, or you can have dreads because you just have dreads. This is your thing, but. You can't have him if you're playing in the NBA. I'll tell you that. Well, I mean, if you look at like two chains, right? Like he, no, I'm just kidding. All right, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> it's about that time. We wrap up the last two segment chains. of the show, the way we wrap up every single wait, show wait, here wait, at the Causeway Street wait, Podcast. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Stevie Wonder has dreads. Oh God. Here we go. But half of his head is bald. Does he shave it, or is he just bald? People do it for him. What? He is blind. What? His hairline starts like in the middle of his head. Paul McCartney. It's worse than Paul McCartney. It's worse than LeBron James' hairline. I will say that. Okay, you got to pick to be one person: Stevie Wonder or LeBron James. What do you mean? Knowing that Stevie Wonder can see, and he's been faking blind the entire <laughs> time, you have to pick one person to be for the rest of your life: Stevie Wonder or LeBron James. Go. LeBron. Yeah, man, it's kind of 
You yeah. guys are idiots. You know why? You yeah. know why? Because LeBron uh, James has sight. Stevie Wonder hmm. can see as well. He can't act like he can see, but he can see. But that's even that's like almost worse. For all you, you new, like pretend to be blind. For all you new listeners, because we do get new listeners on a consistent basis, Sean Dutra, and one of his biggest conspiracies, because he has quite a few, is that the Stevie biggest. Wonder is not blind, and this is the biggest. In fact, we did an after show on this. The only after show we've ever done. He's not blind. And Stevie Wonder, according to Sean Dutra, has never been blind. I also don't think Michael Magic Johnson has AIDS. Well, that's that's yeah. I also think that you can't be. I an believe NBA I believe that too. Well, he never had he never he never had AIDS. He just he was just HIV positive. But I, I see what you're saying. No, I don't think he even came close to AIDS. All right, can we get to in case you missed it, please? <laughs> Jeez. In case you missed it. All what right, you got Joel. In case you missed it. The Philadelphia Magic Johnson does not have it. <laughs> the Philadelphia 76ers. Breaking news. Breaking news. I've won 12 straight guys yeah, heading tough. into tonight, Friday night, at 48 and 30. You right now, they're at half a game. You heard that, Zach? Half squad. a game. Just squad. Half a game mm. behind the Cavs. Are they? For third place. What? Yes. Wow. Who called that? You didn't say third place. What I, I say though? What I say though? Yeah, but okay, you, see, say, but you said they're going to win close to fifty games. Right, right, that's that. bullshit. Well, with that being said, that opens up the window that I was talking about earlier in the show. The if Nets. the Celtics can get past the first round and the the Seventy Sixers win their first round series, motherfucker, you stole my. You telling me you don't have a chance? The Celtics, you, you don't see the Celtics possibly knocking out the Sixers and nope. going to the Eastern Conference Finals? Nope, they're not going to beat the Sixers without without Kyrie. This team can't beat the Sixers. Nope. The same team that beat the hey, Oklahoma City maybe, Thunder. Maybe hey, the same team inj- that if, beat. If Embiid gets injured, yeah. The Portland Trailblazers. If Embiid gets injured, which is a gr- good possibility, I mean, there's a good possibility. Embiid Sean, gets two injured. months ago, we were talking about that this could have been a possible first round matchup. Well, I guess we didn't know Kyrie was going to be out, but nonetheless, this team could beat no, the Philadelphia not 76ers in a seven game series. That's a big thing. What do you mean? You can't tie those two together at all. Okay, listen. I know momentum going into the playoffs is, is big, but. You tell me these guys are experienced enough to to put together a series against someone like Brad Stevens? And B played in Kansas. Al Horford. And B played in what? Kansas. Played a little bit of. Is he 100%? You got is Mark he going to be available Fultz? in this, in this second round series? coming out of nowhere. Concussion, man. Right? Coming back from a concussion. So I, know, I know you didn't just bring up Markel Fultz. Markel I'm Fultz kidding. coming out of nowhere. Ben Simmons. Uh, you guys, come I out of shout on Ben I can Simmons. name four man, Celtics players that are coming man. out of nowhere right now. He's taking one three point shot all season long. Who, Simmons? No. Mark I don't, yeah, that's good. You know what that is? Joel, Joel closed and, his eyes and shook his head. No, and he no. and he missed it. You know what that? You know what? Horribly, that is horribly. And then he and then he 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 had his arm like up and that down, be, like oh, I'm just warming up, guys. That'll be. Then take a shot for the rest you of the game. Can't, okay, fine. You know what? You can either shit on that or you. Can I'm not shit shitting on, on that. All I'm saying Marcus is, all I'm saying is, all, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, if you're saying that a team that has Markel Fultz, who's only played like a handful of games. It can beat the Celtics in the playoffs. No, the reason why I say that is, Mark, is, is Markel no. Fultz is like the eighth player off the bench. Like you have, you have a solid, uh, you have a solid lineup between if if Embiid no. if Embiid is healthy. No, I'm not saying they're not solid, but Covington. No, Covington. You, I didn't even talk about Ben Simmons yet. Ben Simmons is literally. I know, uh, I know, I know what this is. I know what this is. You know what this is? I'll what? tell you what this is. Okay, what is it? This is you because you are a gambling man sticking to your guns. No. You've talked about the Sixers beginning of the season and you're going to stick with them that, until the wheels fall off. I never said they beat the Celtics. No, but you're saying that no, they're going to go deeper to the playoffs. You call them a top five seed. I didn't, I didn't think that they were going to be a number three seed. Or number four seed. I thought they were going to be in the top five. Okay. I thought they were going to be number five. I, I didn't think they would win 50 games. Okay. But, but you're, that just but tells you're me. saying that they're going to the second round and they're going to beat the Celtics. That's what I, you're saying. I, re- I, legitimately, I legitimately agree with those stupid fucking dumbasses that say that the Sixers could make it to the NBA Finals. I don't. I If the Sixers made it to the NBA Finals. First off, year, first off, how dare you call Paul Pierce surprised. a fucking idiot? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know it was Paul Pierce. I, all I've heard is fucking. Max first Keller. of all, bite your tongue. <laughs> all right. All right. so I dare one. you talk about number 34 All I like heard that. was Max Kellerman and these are, these, Those are stupid Pierce said it Pierce said it And I said it in hey, case, finals I said it in case you missed it last week Easter Conference Finals or Easter Conference Finals Yeah no he didn't because say he NBA com- Finals He compared He compared this big difference He compared this No I think He compared this Sixers the team East. He compared this Sixers team To the 0-2 Celtics 2 Celtics Yeah we talked about that last week But no he said Easter Conference Finals Yes You just went nuts Because he said NBA Finals You just called mm-hmm. Kellerman I think you're looking for an excuse To call Kellerman an idiot Yeah Well I think Kellerman Everything he says is dumb at the at the end of the day, 
Cleveland's going to be waiting for whatever team is there in the Eastern Conference Finals. So my point is, if this team without Kyrie Irving can make its way to the Eastern Conference Finals, that's one hell of an accomplishment. No, but, but, if, but if you think about it, if you think if about it. If you could dodge uh, Toronto, if, if, dodge wait, Washington, and make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. If I'm wrong a little bit, if I'm wrong a little bit, if... If the 76ers, I just can't wait for it because Sean's gonna be the, the the one that's like going nuts, being like, "Yeah, man, this team." Oh no! One, oh, Marcus Morris had thirty four last 1, night. One thousand percent. Jason no, Tatum, Brad, Brad Stevens, he's the best coach. Right? No, Jason Tatum dropped fifteen no, straight. I, I, dude, I would love to do that. No, I'm not saying that you, you know wouldn't. I will but what do I'm that. saying is, I can't wait for that to happen. And then I'll be wrong. I would love to be just wrong. <laughs> but if, if I'm just trying to tell you what I think is gonna happen, like I am not feeling good about this team. I'm not. I don't. I like. Right, I, because, I, I will, rightfully so. Because rightfully you wouldn't so. bet on I will be them. rooting. I, I, I will be rooting for this team hard, and I won't touch this with any money and any. Yeah, exactly of because you wouldn't bet on them because unless unless the Celtics. You already have. Like, you already have your your bets in your mind already. That's unless why. The and then you stick with as like a super underdog. And that's fine. Like the that's, heat, that's great. Like you know you you know you you stick with something. You rock with it until the wheels fall out. That's great. Look, it's all it's all about how the bracket worked itself out. That that's that's my point. If if they can if they're not facing the Cavs in the second round, then. They, that's a huge advantage. The 76 has got the three seed, and they. Who's it, their Who's their coach, by the way? Brett Brown. Okay. Good coach. All right. New Hampshire native. Okay. All right. Just making sure. Spurs guy, pop guy. Mm-hmm. So was Baines. Okay. But Brett Brown's been there since they have sucked, and they realized they got a good coach. So. All right. Uh, I, Brett Brown's a good coach. I don't think he's a great coach. I think he's a little overrated, but he's a good coach. All right. Um, he's getting better year after year. Yeah, he no, he he's a he's a coach. You know what I mean? Remember, this dude is going through. Embiid is going through NBA protocol for for his concussion. This is no joke. At the end of the season, this is the wrong. This is, that was the wrong time for him to get injured. Yeah. So they'll if they make it out of the first round, they won't be hundred percent. Yeah, I just I just feel like I feel like if Embiid can stay healthy, right? Yeah. If Embiid stays healthy and they get an injured Celtics team. Or the Wizards, right? Whoever whoever beats the Celtics, or if the Celtics win, if they get a non Kyrie Celtics team in the second round of the playoffs, and then beat us healthy, that's a wrap, man. I, the Celtics are not getting by the Sixers. All right, what else we got, Joel? Well, they didn't finish my first part because I thought it broke it down for you. My bad. No, because guess who they face tonight for a chance to fight for that third seed. They host Braun Braun in the Cavs. It's not like Miami. I don't know why you're saying that song. Right <laughs> What's going on? Philadelphia. Yeah, was that better? <laughs> yeah, that was better. Much better. Nice job. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you just picture Gloria Stefan like freezing her ass off, like next to Liberty Bell. Like <laughs> the rhythm is gonna <laughs> get you. The rhythm is gonna get you. It's like the rhythm is barely getting me. But <laughs> she's taking her hand. The rhythm is gonna get you. Tonight. I'm loving that Philadelphia, loving that Philadelphia, loving that Philadelphia. Oh. Well, in, in case you missed it, now, you know how everything's pretty much wrapped up in the East in terms of top eight team. Detroit's been eliminated. Yeah. Good job, Zach, on that. Yeah, where to go, But out Zach? West, out West is a different ball game, guys. Out there, only three games separate the fourth seed through the tenth seed. These teams include Utah, San Antonio. Oklahoma City, Minnesota, and New Orleans. So all the best team all of those series the are going to be... And L.A., sorry. Those, the all, those, all those series are going to be amazing out west. The Clippers. I can't wait for the first round. And the Nuggets. Who's the best team out of those... What did you just say? Six teams? Eight teams? There's... Seven teams? One, two, three, four, five, seven teams. And there's still, the there's, team? there's still a fight for the last spot, if Who's I'm not the mistaken, right? best team out of that? Well, it's not just the last spot. It's like... It's the... It would be. Fourth it would be on t- on paper. It would be because what Kawhi's out. Because Kawhi's out, it would be OKC. OKC is in danger of not making the playoffs after making it last year with arguably a weak squad. Right. I think I'm taking the Jazz. You think the Jazz are the best team on this list? Could be. They're, yeah. they're, they're right now. I guess again, depending on when you listen to this podcast, they're in fourth right now. Well, I think the Jazz with Mitchell, Gobert, Rubio's had a renaissance season. I mean, you have well, they traded Hood, but now. But I think I think the team the the team that that's like would have bad things happen to them <laughs> if they didn't make the playoffs, oh, like Bill like Sapp? like Paul George not fucking signing or 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 you know having to trade Carmelo, whatever would be OKC. Like that's a it's a that's a fail. That's they wanted they can't even make the playoffs after making it last year with Oladipo. What I would love to see is them get the seventh seed. 
and go up against Golden State because first you're still, round matchup. They're bro. still waiting for Steph Curry to come back. You got Russell Westbrook just like this is the matchup he's just drooling over, salivating over a chance to knock off Kevin Durant in the first round. They got to play. You know he's going to bring his A game. They got to play Houston, and they got to play Utah before the season's over. Okay. Do for Houston them. or they Portland, all got, all got do like Houston or Portland have a chance of knocking off the Warriors this year? Houston, absolutely have a chance. Portland? Portland, not so much, but they'll no? be a fun team to watch. Yeah, I, I think Houston could come out of the West. Absolutely. You don't think that Houston, uh, Portland has a chance of knocking off the Warriors in the second round? I don't. It's very slim. Very slim. All right, Joe. Let's see what you're saying. I got you. I don't know. I just, I just no, find I, it. I find it interesting that you know, like well, teams you know, like San Antonio and OKC and, well, and even Minnesota, they're in danger of not and, making the playoffs yeah. this late in the season. Yeah, in New Orleans. If, you, if if you were to go back to the 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 preseason podcast that we recorded, we had Minnesota way it's up there. complete flip flop. Like remember, Minnesota I had Portland three. just making the playoffs. Yeah, I had uh, who else did I have? Um, yeah, we had OKC. I had Utah Minnesota, not even making it. OKC. Yeah, yeah. We, said, Yo, we were calling Utah, Utah in the lottery. When yeah. Gordon Hayward left, we were like, Nah, oh, they're done. Yeah, they're done. Den- I, I think I have the worst team in the league. I mean, Denver. Yeah, I, think you did. I think I did. Or at least top five. I think I said. We talked about we talked about Denver. We Suns, talked about the Clippers. I had the Suns in the playoffs. Yeah. And all these 10 teams, by the way, well over 500. Oh, you Clippers know, are fighting, too. Clippers are trying yeah. to squeeze you know, You know who I really like out. out of that team, too, uh, that squad of teams, too, man, is Denver. Yeah. Denver, yeah. at one point, they, they were locked in that sixth seed for a long Paul time. Paul yeah. just came back. He just came back. Yeah, yeah. they were doing it without him. Yeah. Like, they, they got to, like, the sixth seed without Paul Millsap. Yeah. And yeah. you have you know who's- Jamal Murray, my yeah. boy, who well, everyone yeah. shat on me when I said that it was a bad— I well, said he was a number three pick that year. That's not the first name I would have brought up, but okay. <laughs> yeah, you got that. You got that. <laughs> who's the first name you're going to bring up? Will Barton. Will Barton, yeah. Been killing it. But, yeah, no, he has been good, though. He, you know what? They made him a point guard. Yes. And, which and it's working out. should have been. Yeah. He nah, should have been a point guard in uh, Kentucky. Who did they get rid of? Who did they trade to the Knicks? They traded um, Jameer Nelson. No, other than that. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I, think, I, think I think they actually waived him. I think, so I think every team traded uh, Jameer Nelson at one point. Including the Celtics. I think they um, <laughs> yeah, which team didn't trade Jameer Nelson at one point? Jameer Nelson was traded to the from, from the Denver Nuggets four times. New York? I don't know. Who are you talking about? They name, traded. Um, name you got Barron. You got Trey Lyles. He's been playing well. Lyles got traded. No, I was still there. No, no. He's not. who? Because this dude got traded. Will Barton became the point guard. Who was? Oh, Trey Lyles got traded from. Uh, Trey Lyles is not a point guard. Um, Will Barton became the point guard because this dude got traded. They Andre straight. Miller. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Think of Nick Van Axel. Nick Billups. Van Axel. Chauncey Billups. <laughs> yes. Allen yes. That's it. <laughs> Chauncey Billups was there twice. By the way. I was thinking Chauncey Billups from way back. Oh, I know, no, I know you're talking about. Recently. Now you got me. Um, Moodyay. Moody. Emmanuel, Emmanuel Moodyay. Yeah. Moody. Moody, yeah. Moody sucked. Well, I'm, all I'm saying guess is. Guess they, were trying, no, they were trying to have him be like the next thing. Because guess, guess who was the number five pick of the draft when Marcus Marker drafted as number six? Moody. Moody. Yeah. The Celtics could have gotten Moody. You know how much better a player Marcus Smart is than Emmanuel Moody? Well, remember they were talking about possibly trading those two for one for the other. Yeah. Yep. Before oh. the trade deadline. Yep. That would have been awful. But but Denver was looking for, as everyone else was, yo, put that away. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Allergies over here, Joel. Hey, let's go skiing. Yeah. <laughs> Stop making hey. jokes. <laughs> yeah, yo, yo, you got some right here. <laughs> Joel's like, yo, yo, wait till you're done. I'm like, wait till we're done. Come on. Everybody wanted first round draft picks, and no one was giving that up. Uh, Tyreek Evans. Tyreek. I feel like, I feel, I feel like that'd be a good... Rap, I was, I was thinking, line. I was like, wait, he wasn't on Denver. Like, he was on Memphis. I'm waiting for that first round pick. <laughs> Tyreek, Tyreek Evans. Evans. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's a great rap line. <laughs> I thought you were making fun of me from a couple weeks ago. That's why no, I thought, no. That's why I started laughing. Tyreek. I was like, wait. I was like, he's not on Denver. He's in uh, Memphis. I didn't say Tyreek. But yeah, like, that reminds know. me of a Wale line from like way back in the day. He goes, half a male rap form. Jared Jack. I was like, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that is a guy who's making half a mil right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh man! So yeah, that's interesting. Our West, even if even if Denver, not Denver, even if uh, OKC wins all their games, they'll win less games this year than they did last year. Fun fact: Who? OKC Ooh. with Paul George and Carmelo, correct? And no Oladipo, and no Oladipo, and no Sabonis. Sabonis. Sabonis is good. He's he is. A good I, I was hoping player. that he would he would fall down for the Celtics to draft them. Nick McMillan, uh, underrated coach. Oh, uh, yes, also as well. I loved him in Portland. Yeah, I thought he too. got boned in Portland. Oh, I did too. Yeah, 
I he really did. did. No, he did. You're no, right. no, he did. No, I agree. It's just Sean's yeah. constantly talking about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, you're always using that that analogy. Bone? Yeah, that analogy. Yeah. yeah. What do you hear? Bone? Yeah, man. You got four <laughs> <years. laughs> you got bone. Like, it paints like, a picture. Right? Poor Nate. Poor Nate. Sucks, man. Got fucked. It's like, jeez. All right. In case you missed it, Marcus Morris. Uh, if you didn't see it, got bone. Got... <laughs> <laughs> Marcus Morris tweeted. An apology on Tuesday for uh, smacking the ref's ass following his ejection in, <laughs> Saturday, hey! in Saturday's win against the the Raptors. I and mean, he felt the reason why he did it, he said, because he felt there was some animosity with the ref's yeah. crew during the Milwaukee game. You know what it didn't mean, baby. <laughs> Especially since he didn't get fined, which everyone thought he was going to get Come fined. On, you don't want the money. <laughs> You want just another spanking, huh? Hey. All right, go ahead. The tweets, Man. the tweets since then has been deleted. <laughs> he deleted it. He deleted it. Yeah. He uh, said he didn't want it to sit up there on top of his because he doesn't tweet like that. He, he was just sitting there. You know I don't yeah. tweet like that, baby. You yeah, know you so. like the smack. He thought hey. people, people, you know, the media asked him because they were like, "Did the NBA make you do that or oh. the Celtics?" He's like, "Nah, I just no, no one makes me do anything." You know that's why I <laughs> smacked you in the first place. All right, all right. He's there, Barry White. Take that it easy. Luscious. Over. I like that. NBA the, pants making your butt look just luscious. I like that after the game. He goes, I know the Celtics fans like me, but now I think they love me. <laughs> yeah, the place went, no, went nuts. Nuts, man. Oh, it I think nuts. they like me. Oh, he, he was looking at the like crowd, me. getting everyone pumped up. I was like, man, this is awesome. And he, bow, he was bow, supposed bow, to shoot bow. another free throw. I know, right? I've never seen that before. He's in the second Shoots one. The free throw, Middle, the, the, mid, mid pair, just getting tossed, throwing out, throwing out. Lots of lots of n bombs to Serge Ibaka. I actually was watching. Do it. I was watching. I was watching the game. <laughs> that will do it. Man. Zero fucks were given that bar. None. I was, I was at this He's bar. like, yeah, you're right. Smack. And I was trying to explain <laughs> it to somebody, and I was like, Savage. no, he smacked his butt, and then he was swearing. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, well, I don't get why they kicked him out. He didn't do anything. And I was like. <laughs> He was swearing. It was all this thing. Yeah, was, he did it. Was a, very abrasive. He did a he did a Wesley Snipes and uh, White Man Can't Jump. Like yeah. you right, baby. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny though? The, if you, if you watch it again, the referee almost like he like flinches. He's, I know, like, he's, like, he's like, no, Marcus, don't do it. Marcus, <laughs> not again. No. Oh yeah, so to do it. I'm gonna tell you no, but please. All right, all right, guys. I'm gonna try to cheer up here a little bit. Right. Celtics Nation. You Those who follow our podcast, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, all right? Now, it's been a while since I've brought up, you know, something that's not sports or basketball related on, in case you missed it, but did any of you guys think that anything could be worse than the uh, Tide Pod challenge that we saw earlier this year going viral where kids, teens were popping Tide Pods and they were no, bursting I, in their mouths I, or whatever? I, um so was there was anyone that class. was there anyone that actually spoke out about it and said, "Listen, man, that was the yeah. best trip of my life"? Like, <laughs> or, or or people just doing it because it was a trend? Like, which one was it? It, it was no like the, said, the challenge. No my, my understanding, challenge. my understanding of it is like you were supposed to just like mess with it in your mouth so it didn't pop. But for those that it did burst, nothing happened. I don't know. Mm, Joel likes know. to get wet, huh? Nah, man. I think we should try this out. Joel likes to get wet with the Sean, Sean I'm not the get one. Get the Tide get the camera. Let's do it. I'm not the one. I got. I got the one um, with the sniffles over here. I got the dishwasher once. No, yeah, it's Tide Pods. I don't have. I don't. I don't have Tide Pods, but I got. I think it's called. Uh, no, look, look. I'm considered dish safe or something. Despite <laughs> what is that fucking shit called? <laughs> despite the year I was born, I'm considered a millennial, but I will never do some shit like that. Hey, you will. But you've done it. No, I'm not. You haven't. You haven't gargled the Tide Pod. No, man. If you haven't gurgled the Tide Pod, you haven't lived. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess I'm not living then. Guess not. Well, I, I didn't think there would be anything worse than that. Have you guys heard of the newest trend? Oh, I think I know what you're about to say. It's called the Snorting Condoms Challenge. Wait. <laughs> Why is that the name? That's the name. <laughs> because that's what it is. That's exactly man. what it is. Yeah. Nope. I think that's a great name Kids, for it. Nope. I don't snorting think that's condoms. A great name. Li- literally, literally, snorting the whole condom into out. their nose. Yeah. And pulling it out through their mouths. Ah, yeah, that's uh, it. That's I, it. I hate when I that's s- it. I sniff too hard and a booger comes in my nose, my mouth. Oh yeah, from my nose. That's oh, the yeah. most disgusting feeling in the world. Or when you sneeze really high, like aggressively, and, and like, yeah, or, or or like you're like you've been blowing the the tissue all day, and it's like you still got shit coming out as you go, and it's just like and it's, you taste it in your mouth. That's the fucking worst. Like phlegm and shit. <laughs> yeah, but this is like you don't. Are these this isn't condoms. You don't get a you don't just, get a buzz off just, of this. Right. This is just like oh, I dare you to do that. Yeah, and people are doing it. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, that's what it is. Yeah, I feel. I feel like. I feel oh, like probably before you died from a Tide worse. Pod, you would get high. Yeah. I mean, from like laund- laundry detergent, you'd get high. I'm I don't sure know if you would get high. Like, I think I think people assume that. Wow, I think people assume, that's probably what you're feeling. No, you're I think people feeling, assume that, but you would have to call poison control if you were to, yeah. you know, ingest but, but that a Tide call, Pod. But that call to poison control would be off the fucking train. <laughs> This way you just pull it out and you're just like, yeah, yeah, this is stupid. I don't really understand that. Yeah. I am. Um, I'm really nervous. I'm really nervous because I, now I feel like. Yeah, man, you got to talk to your son about yeah, this. Yeah, now man. I, I, really yeah man. I feel like I'm having a kid. Like when you when you do laundry gonna, with him, you go, son. Don't even look at those titles. Those bugs. look like yummy treats, <laughs> but they're not. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about. If you ever think if something's a bad idea, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> just don't. don't. And then talk to me about it. That yeah. conversation's going to be tough. That's yeah. going to be a tough conversation. I'm going to be. No like, such thing as a stupid question, son. Because if people are doing this type of stuff in 2018, can you imagine in 2030? Yeah, I'm really going to try to when make your son sure. Is like 12, I don't know 13. how long I'm going to be able to like keep like technology away from my kid, but I'm going to try. No, you're, you're no. Please do it. I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> please I do already it. told Paula. I said if I see trust you, me from experience. If I see, please you, do it. If I see you. On your phone, in front of the child. Yes. I'm taking your phone and I'm smashing it. Don't do it. Just yeah. And if I do the same thing, you have to do the same thing to me because yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to show my baby, who is literally the only thing it does when it's awake, is watches you. Yes. Exactly. So if you <laughs> exactly. are not like, ah, oh, here's a baby, and the <laughs> other part of you is just, what's on my phone? The thing's gonna be like. I want the phone. What's I what's want, what's so important what that you're not paying attention at, to me? Yeah. What is he looking at on that phone that is taking you away from me, uh, a four month old baby? That hello, I need all the attention I fucking can get. Over not here. only that, but like a baby is so entertained by like some simple shit like yeah. peekaboo. And I make I, th- I think <laughs> a I'm set gonna of make, keys. I'm gonna make a rule that says if you are on your phone around my baby, I'm spiking your phone. Like it's a, everybody that comes over, you got to put a phone just into put a your fucking phone pouch. In the in the bucket. Yeah, exactly. It's Don't want to touch be a that phone shit. Free zone. You know what? If you want to play music off your phone, Cause you, fine. Because you know do what? Do it when you walk in. Because you know what everyone's gonna say as soon as, as soon as your your son is born. Oh, can we come over and visit the baby? And then they're gonna be on their phone. You're like, no, you came to see my child. And then there's gonna be one. Put the phone gonna away. Be one moment where the baby just figures out how to use its eyes and just like looks around the room. And it's that one time when like you realize yourself. It's been mad quiet for like five minutes and <laughs> everybody's on their phones. Nah, that baby's the baby's gonna have to realize that in like Target in line when he's seven. He'll figure that out when he's seven in line in Target when everyone's waiting on their phone. I'm not doing it around him before that. That's it. Well, in case you missed it, in honor of Red Sox home the home opener. Hanley! I got a little I got a little treat for y'all. This is called this little segment here, and I got it from another radio station here in Boston. <laughs> and it's called Name that tune by Joe Castiglione, who he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna rap a verse, and you gotta figure out what song it is. Okay, Joe Castiglione, for those who don't live in Boston, is the voice of the Red Sox on the radio. <laughs> Joe Castiglione rapping, right? <laughs> and this were several songs. So I I you know I wish I could play them all. I wish I could play them all. But Joe I, got I, bars. I wanted to I wanted to choose one that I think I think Sean would appreciate. So let's let's take a listen and see if you can name that tune. Ah, uh, thinking out loud. I must have a quarter million on me right now. Hard to say a song about something other than the money. Two things I'm about is talking blunt and staying blunted. Pretty woman, are you here? Are you here right now, huh? We should all disappear right now. Look, you're getting all your friends and you're getting in the car. And you're coming to the house. Are we clear right now, huh? All right, so what do you think <laughs> was Joe spitting right there? I don't know. I was He's staying blunted. Joe. Staying blunted. So what do you think? Staying blunted. Take a wild oh, guess. Come on, man. You know what this is. I was too busy laughing, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. He was too busy listening to Joe spit that heat. <laughs> know, that like, fire. I was like, because they leave. Yeah. And this is like, that was like the, this is like the third or fourth song that he, he already spit fire on. <laughs> I'll let you guys listen to that after the show's over, but this one, this one was good. Hit hey, me back. Right. Hit me back. It's Truffle Butter by Nicki Mirage. Can you believe it? (laughs) 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 It's Can you believe it? Can you believe it? For those that, that didn't understand what Joe said, 
<laughs> it's Nicki Minaj, not <laughs> not Mirage. <laughs> what is? <laughs> it's Nicki Mirage. <laughs> Can you believe it? Can you believe it? <laughs> uh, whatever that was was the best thing I ever heard about my <laughs> life. <laughs> That was the best thing I heard of my entire life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, man. Now it's all that. about the money. <laughs> <laughs> staying rich and staying blunted. Are you here? Are you here right now, huh? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I like when he goes, huh? <laughs> huh? I know. <laughs> Are you here right you now, huh? Huh? <laughs> 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 so I thought I in my case missed it with a nice little <laughs> a nice little opening opening day. Well home opening day, you know, little thing by <laughs> the boys of the Red Sox. Joke the yeah, I wish you had our mics all the way up, man. We were uh, from the beginning, I lost it. That was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the audience, the audience would have been able to hear the rest of the rap, so that's why I had to be if, if, if people are like people out there who listen to the podcast, uh, if they're avid like Sox mm-hmm. fan, even if, if you've just been in the city for like the next like the last ten years or so, you know Joe Castiglione, and you know his voice, and like just to hear him be spitting like that just cracks me. Up. Shaz, <laughs> <laughs> this city's brought to you by Shaz. If you get to the little Debbie sale, you'll get them two for five. Well, wise little Debbie, wise potato chips, the yeah. official chip of the Boston Red Sox. Huh? <laughs> Now all gonna Can do you that's believe a, it? That's a drop Joker right there. That's a like, drop. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> that's it for In Case You Missed It. All right, yo, we're up yeah. out of here. Yo, next week, um, playoff previews, Western Conference, Eastern Conference, all that fun stuff. We have a, a special guest coming in. Word. Actually, he's not coming. He's coming. He's going to call over the phone. But not gonna we have work. a special guest. Uh, joining us next week, breaking down the playoffs. We're previewing the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference, so <laughs> we'll have a jam-packed show. I hear. We'll um, we'll, we'll hit you with content all week, man. We have two shows: the Eastern Conference, Western Conference breakdown, and uh, and maybe man, some more into the playoffs. And maybe season, some more Joe Castiglione. This season, <laughs> Little Debbie's. This season is is, is fucking flowed my man. I know we say that all the time, <laughs> but it really has. Shop the kids, Charles, huh? The kids will be all right, folks. For you Celtics fans out there, they're gonna be. All right. <laughs> All right. There and away go. we go. <laughs> There's some positivity for you. <laughs> Until next time. We out. Causeway Street Podcast. Away! Huh? Off the wall! Pretty woman, are you here? Are you here right now, huh? It's Truffle Butter by Nikki Mirage. Can you believe it? <laughs>